Um, at the outset, I would like to thank the All India Ophthalmic Society for this uh, invitation. Uh, viral uh, retinitis is definitely an ophthalmic emergency as it is associated with a high rate of uh, visual morbidity. Uh, the, the viruses which are usually implicated in viral retinitis belong to the herpes viridae group. And these are viruses which remain latent in our body. And when there is a decreased cell mediated immunity, it causes reactivation and the clinical disease. The host immunity plays an important role in the type of presentation which we see. Now, as we had learned from the earlier speakers, a viral retinitis is definitely a clinical uh, diagnosis, and there are a lot of important clues which will suggest that. So, for example, you have a pattern of retinitis, and then if it is associated with pigmented keratic precipitates, which are distributed across the corneal endothelium, and if there is an increased intraocular pressure, this is usually suggestive of a viral infection. So, let's look at the pattern recognition. So the first pattern, which is very important, is the acute retinal necrosis. Now, the way we define this pattern is there are one or more foci of retinal necrosis in the peripheral retina, and there is rapid progression in the absence of treatment with the circumferential spread. Sometimes it can be associated with hemorrhages at the borders and very limited hemorrhages. And then you can see this occlusive vasculopathy. And this whole pattern is associated with increased inflammation in the vitreous and the anterior chamber. Now, this can also co-present with optic nerve involvement and scleritis. However, sometimes you can have just the disc edema presenting initially, as in this case, with some amount of serous fluid. And this was mistakenly thought as VKH, and this patient was started on oral steroids. But this patient actually had acute retinal necrosis, which started unfolding over the next uh, couple of days. And this is a fluorescent angiography pattern showing the areas, large areas of necrosis with uh, uh, vasculopathy. Now, acute retinal necrosis is most commonly caused by the herpes simplex and the varicella zoster virus. But there are reports of cytomegalovirus also causing ARN in HIV. Uh, the traditional hallmark is immunocompetence, but these are patients which have some amount of subclinical immune dysfunction. So when you look at the history, they usually have a history of herpetic disease. They, can, they could have malignancy, they could have systemic comorbidities like diabetes, multidrug resistant TB, et cetera, where the CMI is affected. And it could be iatrogenic immune suppression in the form of systemic immunosuppressives, biologics, or even local steroids. So how do we treat these patients? These patients are usually treated with systemic medications, most importantly. And this is very important because this is to prevent the involvement of the other eye and CNS-associated complications. And the drugs which are used are intravenous acyclovir or oral valcyclovir. Adjunctive therapy includes intravitreal injections of gancyclovir. And we also give oral steroids under this antiviral cover, especially when there is significant inflammation and if there is optic nerve involvement. We need to monitor these patients very closely for retinal breaks as they can lead to retinal detachments, which can uh, result in poor prognosis. The second most important pattern is the progressive outer retinal necrosis. And this is characterized by multifocal deep retinal opacification. They don't have any demarcation, so they are very confluent. And usually there is no vascular inflammation or there is none or minimal intraocular inflammation. The most important finding is this perivenular lucency or what we, now, what we call as the cracked mud appearance. Now, this is usually seen when there is very severe immune suppression. So this is on the other end of the spectrum. And the most common disease which is associated with this is HIV. Majority cases of PORN is usually caused by the varicella zoster virus. And the goal of treatment will be to the antiviral therapy, which should be aggressive. And at the same time, you need to collect, correct the underlying immunodeficiency. So the treatment is usually by intravenous gancyclovir along with adjunctive intravitreal uh, gancyclovir or fo foscarnet. There are reports of supra-threshold therapies of intravenous acyclovir also given, but these have a lot of renal complications. By and large, the prognosis is quite poor in these cases. 
Now, this is another case of uh, which looked like a progressive outer retinal necrosis, but this was caused by the mumps virus. And this patient, again, the retinal edema improved, but uh, had so much of outer retinal atrophy, unrecordable ERGs, and she has just perception of light. And this is a nine-year-old girl. The third pattern which we see, which we should recognize is what we call as the pizza pie or the tomato ketchup appearance or the brush fire pattern, which is very typical of the CMV retinitis. And uh, this is a hemorrhagic component. It may be associated with optic atrophy with sclerosed vessels, and it can also be associated with this kind of frosted branch angitis. So basically it is seen when the CD4 counts are very low, less than 100. And, uh, Apart from HIV, you also see uh, CMV retinitis post-transplants with biologics in malignancies and now more commonly local steroid injections. This is a patient and the imaging characteristics of CMV retinitis. Now, when you see a pattern like this, which is so bizarre with a lot of hemorrhagic component in this patient with CMV retinitis, always look for hematological parameters. So look for any hematological abnormalities because this is quite common when you have hematological abnormalities. So this patient had severe anemia and ha actually failed the first line of antiretroviral therapy. This was actually a child. In the era of heart, now we are seeing more of immune recovery uh, uveitis, and that could be mild to moderate or very severe like this. And pay attention to this vasculopathy, the occlusive vasculopathy, which you see. And this is usually not so common if you have treated these patients with systemic anti, uh, 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 antiviral therapy. This is very important because this can cause ischemia and then new vascularization. This is another severe case, again, immune recovery, uveitis, and this is what we see as bilateral arthritis. These cases progress very fast to um, neovascularization, vitreous hemorrhage, and you can even lose the eye. So these cases need to be extensively lasered uh, initially itself, and they always need to be on maintenance of gancyclovir therapy. As the CMV retinitis in HIV is declining, thanks to the availability of um, free antiretroviral therapy, we are seeing more and more cases of CMV retinitis in non-HIV. Unlike our HIV counterparts, these are refractory to therapy and require more number of injections, and they progress to vasculopathy and ischemia with neovascularization. So this is something which we need to keep in mind when we follow up these patients. So the treatment is gancyclovir, intravenous gancyclovir, uh, along with um, uh, intravitreal injections of gancyclovir. So the uh, dosages are available. Any antiviral therapy in all the forms usually require maintenance. And we actually, the recommended one is at least up to six months. This is a case, again, with treatment. And if you can see this uh, arterial involvement, vasculopathy, and even though the retinitis has resolved, they need to be followed up for neovascularization. I just wanted to add this. There are lots of myths about acyclovir. Please do not give any test doses of acyclovir. This is one patient who had received test doses of acyclovir because these are all vesicants and they lead to subcutaneous extravasation can cause extensive tissue ne uh, necrosis and uh, tissue damage. So this is something which we need to keep in mind. The pattern four is multifocal retinitis, generally seen as described by our previous speaker. Though they look so dangerous at presentation, they generally have a very good prognosis. The role of labs is supportive and PCR, usually for atypical cases and monitoring of therapy, especially in gancyclovir resistant cases of CMV retinitis. So to conclude, uh, viral retinitis is an ophthalmic emergency, and there is increased incidence in the era of HIV and iatrogenic immune suppression. The cornerstones of management is early identification by pattern recognition, prompt and aggressive treatment, and a multidisciplinary approach to manage the immune deficiency. Thank you so much.